Politics and religion, they do not mix, they collide. Well, we're back here in Washington for Religion and Politics in America, our election edition. We're talking with influencers and D.C. Beltway insiders about the role of politics and religion in the current 2020 campaign. What we're most interested in is how religion and politics collide at the ballot box. I think there's no doubt that faith is being used in this particular election, and frankly, most of the elections that I've been alive for, though, I think it feels more prominent now than it has in the past. Um, and I think that's a symptom of larger divides that actually exist in this country. I don't think that uh, God has ever been out of the political scene in America. Uh, I think uh, the question is it's around organized religion. In organized religion, uh, the government's not allowed to support or create an organized religion. That's a different issue. And I, I, you know, I think people are very much in support of that separation, which has become known as church and state. You know, since the very beginning of our country, when George Washington was sworn into office in New York City, of all places, on Wall Street, one of the first things he did was to make sure that everybody went to the local church to be able to pray uh, at the time that he was being sworn into office. And every president since then has actually worshipped on the day of the inauguration at this wonderful St. John's Church behind me. And uh, what is rather extraordinary is, is that uh, most all of the presidents actually have called for days of prayer to be able to unite the country. Um, George Washington did it, Abraham Lincoln did it, and most recently President Trump did it. We know that President Trump has positioned himself kind of as a champion for evangelicals ever since 2016, despite the fact that he's not evangelical, and he, in the past, hasn't been that religious. He doesn't attend church regularly, for example. So this was definitely a public relations move on his part, and I think you're absolutely right. He was trying to extend it to this issue of law and order and during these protests. Now, I think President and Trump thought this that this would be an opportunity to show strength, and but at the same time, he missed the opportunity to really make this a unifying moment. I mean, him using federal forces to clear out this area with force in front of a church without letting the diocese or the church know, you know, that spoke volumes. And the fact that all he did was hold up a Bible, he didn't give any additional remarks, really. I mean, I think that very much spoke volumes. That being said, I don't think a lot of evangelical Evangelicals or maybe evangelical voters who were on the fence about President Trump, I don't think it changed their mind at all. I think they viewed this as an opportunity and maybe a lot of, uh, you know, I think a lot of religious voters I've spoken to, uh, conservative Christians, for example, said, look, you know, this was clearly a public relations stunt. We get it. However, President Trump is going to appoint conservative judges who are, are going to work to maybe chip away at Roe v. Wade, who are going to, you know, pass or try to implement conservative principles. They're more concerned about the substance. I think they see all the public show that President Trump likes to put on, but I think they almost ignore that and just focus on what President Trump is going to do for their community and really implementing their own beliefs. Well, certainly to the, to the effect that each one of us is the sum total of everything we've ever seen or heard or felt or experienced, um, you cannot escape the fact that, that people who are religious have that component as a part of who and what they are. Um, we've been going through this with a recent Supreme Court justice that, uh, that has just been uh, uh, confirmed at least by the panel of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate. In terms of the Roman Catholic uh, element of this, you know, this has been an issue over the past couple of weeks because we know that Amy Coney Barrett, uh, President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, is Roman Catholic and we saw a lot of Republicans saying, look, there is a chance that Democrats are going to use her faith against her. And you saw that Democrats very much much laid off of that in their attack, attacking on, or ta attacking Amy Coney Barrett, you know, in questioning and such. They did not push her on her faith or even Roe v. Wade, they pushed her on health care in particular and protecting Obamacare. So they know that faith for them is a very sensitive subject. They know that Roman Catholics, on average, tend to vote more conservatively than they do democratically. And I think they also know that Joe Biden is making inroads with some of these Roman Catholic voters, in particular older Roman Catholic voters, maybe in communities in places like Florida, where you see Joe Biden leading with seniors. So Democrats are walking a very fine line 
but it makes sense that Vice President Biden would use this for getting his message about empathy across. I think what you see is Vice President Biden talking about life issues, and he talks about the commitment to your neighbor, to the least of our brothers and sisters, and that resonates across all religious traditions. Jews call it tikkun olam, to repair the world. If politics is the actualization of a community's values in the public square, the Torah is filled with legislation, law and narrative, which seeks to actually accomplish that. The Torah has what to say about the death penalty. The Torah has what to say about people who steal from one another. The Torah has what to say about abortion. The Torah has what to say about self-defense. The Torah has what to say about somebody's right to express themselves freely in a particular society. What the Torah doesn't ever do is claim a partisan position, which is to say a document that was crafted and constructed over 3,000 years ago could not possibly have been um, set up to speak to American politics in a particular policy way in 2020.